And what did you sort of learn from that match, your, your debut for Anderlecht? So, I mean, were you, was the pace of the game different to what you experienced last year in the Championship? What sort of things did you encounter which were perhaps new or familiar as well? Yeah, I wouldn't say the pace was, um, was, was any different from the Championship. I would say the Championship was a bit more direct up and down. Um, and, and a lot more crosses in the box as soon as, you know, they get, someone gets in the final third. But I would say this was a bit more tactical in terms of a lot of runs in behind. Um, teams um, kind of played a bit more football, a bit more tactics in terms of how they set up defending against us. Um, and then obviously when they had the ball, they were also patient. They weren't so, um, so antsy to get forward. They wanted to kind of create a buildup. But um, it was a good level. Um, I kind of knew what to expect because I've played in Holland, I've played in France, and I've played in the championship. And I would say the Belgian league is kind of a combination of all three, if I had to, to kind of explain it. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited for the challenges ahead. Um, I know it's a young team, and um, I'm, much, I'm, not, I'm not too young anymore. I, I wish I could say that, but uh, oh, the reality is I'm not. And... Um, and yeah, we have a, a strong team with a lot of talents. Like I said, young, but we have a great coach um, in Vincent Company and a great staff around him. And we have a philosophy and we have an identity that we want to implement um, in our football and in our games. And hopefully we can continue to keep working hard toward to achieving those goals. How big, of a, how big of a draw was Vincent Company for you and the chance to work with him? I mean... As a defender, he's one of the you know the modern greats. Really, won everything at Manchester City, um, loads of caps for Belgium. So experienced. Was that was that a big thing for you? Yeah, uh, you said it spot on. That when it came down to it, you know, for me, I continuously want to grow. I want to I want to learn from the best. I want to learn new things constantly. And um, when this opportunity arose, um, I felt like it was a right step and the right opportunity for me to continue to progress and learn because there's so much to learn in this game of football um, from so many different people, managers, directors, teammates, so on. Um, and then obviously Vincent Company was one of, like you said, the best central defenders um, when he was playing in the world. And uh, we had some good conversations and, you know, he sold me on the project and as well as a director. And um, it just made sense for me to, to go and, and learn from him. And uh, when Anderlecht um, announced your signing on loan, they, they talked about your pace and technique as one of the main reasons they went for you. They're looking to, for you to bring more competition to the defence, you know, um, also obviously start and excel. What sort of things do you hope on a personal level to get out of this loan and to get from Vincent Company? Are there certain areas which you earmarked before, perhaps, which you really wanted to, to push ahead on? Or is it more just sort of like an organic process where you're just looking to take everything as it comes? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. Obviously, it's, an, it's a process for me to kind of see how things develop and just naturally come. But at the same time, for me, I just want to always continue to, uh, like I said before, to grow, to get better. I'm not naive to, 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 know, to think that I know everything. I know there's so much to learn um, in this game to continue to learn and and, and get better at in my position and excel in my craft. Um, and I think this season uh, is another challenge with playing in different league, um, trying to take more of a leadership role because um, there's a lot of young players. Um, and then obviously learning from one of the best central defenders that, uh, that's played the game. So for me, if I can kind of put all those things together uh, and work diligently um, on each thing, um, I, I hope and I believe that at the end of this season, I'll be a, a better player for it and, and also a better uh, man, essentially. And talk me through like the decision process you went through before agreeing to go to Anderlet because your loan finished at Reading and then there was a spell perhaps where, I don't know, were you training with Chelsea in this time? And then to go to Anderlet, how did the summer all work out for you? Well, the summer was a bit frustrating because um, I got injured in my last game in Reading. Uh, which ended up being quite a serious injury. I was out for about seven weeks. It was an ankle injury. So that whole time I was just rehabbing at Chelsea. Um, and I wasn't able to train because I was just rehabbing and trying to get it stronger and, and rest and recover it. Um, and then at the time there was, you know, a few options here and there, um, hearing things from my agents, hearing things from Chelsea. Um, and my number one priority was getting healthy 
So once I got healthy, that's when more options started rolling. I remember Andrew Leck first um, spoke with me and my agents um, in early August. Um, and then it kind of went quiet for a bit. And then um, more options were arising and they spoke with me again. And then there was just minor details for me to kind of just make a decision. Um, and then the window was coming coming to, to an end and, and getting to an end. So I had to make a decision and I felt like Anderlecht was the right step. You know, they wanted me and I wanted them. And then, um, like I told you before, all the little um, situations that I know I can excel here with um, played a big part and hopefully everything goes well. Yeah, awesome. I mean, this is your is it, is your fourth loan now with Chelsea. Were you, were you considering uh, perhaps a permanent move at this stage? I think I read somewhere that there's something on your radar perhaps. I mean, how did you weigh up a loan versus a permanent transfer? And was that all part of the consideration as well? Yeah, it was a consideration, if, if I'm being completely honest with you, was to get a permanent move. And there was, there was, there was options for permanent moves. Um, but with this whole um, COVID situation and, and the market being what it was, um, there was a lot more details that go into a permanent. Um, and at the time, it just didn't work out uh, for whatever reason. But um, I spoke with the a hierarchy at Chelsea and they still believe in me. And for me, it's about, you know, last year was a bit of a disruption with a lot of injuries. Um, so hopefully this year I can stay healthy and really, you know, prove myself. Um, number one, at a top club like Anderlecht in a good league as well. And then we'll see what happens from there. But my main focus is Anderlecht right now. I'm fully invested in the project here and, uh, and the team here. And I want to do my best for, for the club and, and for the staff and for my teammates. And I feel like if I do that, um, everything else will fall into place after. Do you, do you still, um, I was chatting to a few of the other Chelsea loanees, do you still have your WhatsApp group as well? Is that still a thing? Yeah, it's still a WhatsApp group, yeah. Um, just share information sometimes of, you know, one, just scheduling information, like for preseason, uh, that was important, um, just to see what got, who's coming in when and, and all these things. Um, and number two is obviously we all have our, you would say, quote unquote, you know, loan coaches that, you know, mm -hmm. take care of us. There's a few of them. There's Carlo Cudicini, Claude Makalele, uh, Torre, Torre Andre Flo, Paulo Ferreira, um, and a couple other guys as well that, you know, take care of it. Um, and, you know, I've been working with Carlo for the, for the past few years and, and he's been great with me. Um, and we've been, we try to stay in touch after every match, to be honest with you. He kind of draws up an ana analysis for me of what he thought I'd done well, what he thought I could improve on, um, and just little things off the pitch as well if I needed any help. And then um, before this whole pandemic, they would come out actually every, I would say, few months, meet with us, meet with the club. We would go over, you know, video analysis and have a proper meeting about, you know, what we're doing well, like I said, what we're doing bad, uh, what we can improve on, I, would, I should say, and, uh, and what, you know, the future holds. So um, awesome. it's another year where I can continue to learn because Carlo has been a huge help for me as well. Um, because the more eyes, the, the more experienced people that can, you know, I guess, advise me and guide me and, and help me, you know, you're going to take it, right? So, yeah, I mean, keep going. one more player, and you've got a pretty good five side football team there, haven't you? What, Makalele, Ferreira, uh, Tori Andre Flo, Kudicini, it's not bad, is it? Yeah, 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 exactly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's quality. Um, how does it work from yeah. when you were saying there before? 100% uh, Anderlecht player, but do you still feel like a Chelsea player as well at the same time? Or do you kind of just have to sort of, you know, park that to one side and then completely focus on um, where you are now in Belgium? Yeah, that's a really good question, to be honest with you. Um, I would say, you know, the latter of what you said, um, the reality is I need to put that aside. Like, like, obviously, my parent club is Chelsea. I have a contract with Chelsea, you know. Um, I was with the first team and that's when I obviously felt like a Chelsea player, but it's been a while since I was part of the first team. So um, right now I'm just investing to Anderlecht. Like, like I said, my mind's here. My uh, mentality is to, to win at all costs here with this club and improve and try to help, you know, Anderlecht get back to, uh, to where it's supposed to be. And that's uh, top of the table, winning titles and, and playing Champions League. So um, just got to take it day by day and, and work hard and, and be patient and, uh, and be smart about it.
But it's so you've got um, Christian Pulisic as well, obviously. Do you, do you chat to him much about what's what life is like back in London, and do you keep in touch? Obviously, you play together for the for the US team as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, during my rehab at Chelsea, actually, uh, these last seven weeks, I was with Christian quite a bit because he was also nursing an injury. Um, so I was seeing him a lot, and obviously, we hung out a few times um, after after rehab and 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 at his house or, uh, or a few, few, few meals together. Um, and obviously we chat about, you know, life with the national team and life with, with Chelsea and life, you know, where I'm at and so on. Um, so we keep in touch, obviously we, uh, we, um, we've uh, been communicating quite, quite, quite often to be fair on WhatsApp and Snapchat. And then I know Mason Mount really well as well through my time at Vitesse. So we stay in touch as well. So, those, I would say, the two guys that I'm probably most close with um, at Chelsea. And then uh, US national team, I mean, it's a hugely exciting time. Look at the talent coming through. Um, you've got yourself, you've got Gio, Christian Pulisic, you've got Weston McKenney. I mean, the list goes on. Josh Sargent. Um, as a group, you must be hugely excited about what the, the sort of the present and the future looks like as well. Yeah, uh, you just said it spot on. Um, we have a lot of big talents, a lot of a lot of players playing for massive clubs, um, and not just playing, but they're making impact. So um, and they're young. So, you know, we have you know sky's the limit for us. I think for the U.S. Um, we're young, so if we continue to 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 push ourselves individually at, at the clubs that we're at, and then when it comes together with the national team, kind of putting that all together and and, and performing. Um, I think um, there's a lot of exciting times ahead for the U.S. national team. Um, and hopefully, you know, we have this camp in November where we can get together again because we haven't gotten together in a while. Um, so, but we've been in touch, you know, uh, the, the manager, actually, uh, Greg uh, Berhalter, put together also, you know, kind of uh, a way to connect uh, through WhatsApp with all the U.S. national team guys um, during the pandemic and then obviously still now. So we all stay in touch um, and they've done a good job. You know, um, Greg is in constant contact with all of us um, and he keeps us in the loop with, with what's going on. And he's been doing a great job for, for the national team. And hopefully we can kind of, like I said, get together and, and try to, you know, showcase what we've been doing individually at, you know, our own clubs. And then when we come together as a national team, I think um, there's a exciting, uh, exciting future ahead. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.